So today we are going to make our first AI agent. We've already talked about the system design in the last video. And uh, before we do that, we will uh, need to make a Google Cloud project because we are going to use the Google Cloud platform to make our AI agent. In case uh, you want to learn how to do that, uh, there's a very simple video that I had made earlier on. I'll put the link for this video and you can actually just check out uh, the time for stamp 430, which is getting $300 free in credits from Google and creating a Google Cloud project. And this these credits actually help you you know, uh, cover your expenses on all the testing and uh, learning that you're doing with this particular AI agent. So look out for this video link in the description and the pinned comment and check out the section on making the Google Cloud project over here. All right, so as a first step, we go to Google Cloud and we open the Google Cloud platform and we click on console to access the console. So when you're going to create the Google Cloud project, you'll probably get a default project like this, which is my first project. And you can actually select that, right? Uh, once uh, you want to set up this agent. So the first thing to do is for this project, we need to enable the Dialogflow API service. Search for Dialogflow, get this, click on that API and you click on enable. So as this says, it helps you build conversational interfaces. And this, once this is enabled, we can start using this. Cool. So we have enabled this API now, and now we want to enable something called the Vertex AI search and conversation API. So what we'll do is we'll search for that Vertex AI search and conversation, and we get this agent builder and we click on this. All right. So you get this page and then you just click on continue and activate the API to activate this. Okay. So now we are going to create a new chat app and a data store for our app. All right. And this is the Vertex AI conversation console that we're looking at. And we have an agent builder over here and we have the create app interface. If you actually landed on this page before this, you would have seen a list of your apps over here. And right now we don't have any apps and you can click on create a new app to create it. All right. So we click on create app, making sure that we have the correct project selected over here. So we are going to create a sample app provided by Google. So first we select a type of the app over here. We want to make a conversational agent. So we'll click create a chat app. Then we want to provide a company name. So for company name, from the example, we'll put save a life over here. And this is going to be an app basically, which helps blood donors understand whether they are eligible to donate blood or not. So we provide our agent name. So let's say the agent name is blood donation agent. And now we click on continue. And now we need to select the data store for our app. So we click on create data store over here. And then for this, we use cloud storage. Now, if you want to provide your own data store over here, you can actually provide unstructured documents like PDF, HTML, text, etc. And you can click on how to prepare data for ingesting into Google Cloud. Also, you can actually select other data stores like website content and data from an API. But for now, since we want to just understand how to build a very simple agent, we are going to select cloud storage over here and we're going to provide a sample location, which is this and we are going to click continue. So this is one of the preset databases from Google and we can use that to understand how to create an agent. We need to enter a data store name. So we'll say this is the Australian Red Cross Lifeblood Unstructured and then we'll click create. Now we'll go to create again. And this is finally going to create our chat app after having created the data store over here. All right, so we have successfully created the app over here. Let's click that once and we have a preview over here. Okay, so now we're at the Dialogflow console for further testing and customization. Now we'll configure the agent to answer any questions related to blood donation eligibility. So what we'll do over here is click on agent settings, go to the generative AI tab, go to the data store. And now we are going to provide a data store prompt, which is basically going to help us answer uh, any queries and generate answers for them from the data store content. So we're going to enter the name over here as donate, and then we're going to enter the identity as chatbot. And then we're going to enter save a life over here. And then we're going to enter a fictitious organization over here. We'll enter the agent scope humans with eligibility information. And so now this makes a prompt for us, which says your name is donate and you're a helpful polite chatbot at save a life of fictitious organization. Your name, your task is to assist humans with eligibility information and remove the duplicacy of humans. So now what this will do is this will provide a data store prompt and this is providing this information as it's mentioned can improve the quality of answers generated from the data store that we've just provided and make them feel, uh, feel more connected to your brand. So let's click on save over here to save the agent settings. 
So now we're going to go back. All right, so now we're at the build tab and we go to the start page and we look at event handlers. So as we checked before that, you know, event handlers will help you transition or provide a response to a particular query. And we select the no match default event handler over here, which basically means that the user has provided some kind of information that did not match any intent that we had coded in. And we will provide a enable generative call uh, fallback option, which basically helps the agent respond with some clarifying question over here, which we have listed over here already. This is enabled by default in case it is not, please do enable it. And to check more about the no match default option, you can actually search for it and go to state handlers. And uh, over here, you can actually check that the end user input does not match any intent for handlers that are in scope. And that is a point in time when this particular um, event handler will be invoked and the agent will respond with a message like this. All right, and now we're going to edit the data store for the start page over here. So we click on edit data stores over here and automatically this opens up the data stores uh, tab over here and we can see that uh, the data source that we had created data store that we had created is mentioned over here and now if we go to agent responses uh, we define what response does the agent give from the data store so we put in this special parameter over here which is called request dot knowledge dot answers zero so whatever is the list of answers that the agent can get from the data store it will provide the top answer which is at location zero from this and that's how we want to set this up. So this is already set up for you. And this basically means that we are going to actually get the best answer from the data store. Right, so now we can test the agent over here. So we click on test agent. We can close this data store tab over here. And then we can talk to the agent over here. So let's ask some standard queries. So what age do I need to be to be able to donate? All right, so this says, you know, you must be between 18 and 75 years old to donate blood, you must also weigh over 50 kgs. So this is basically then getting to the data store, checking for our query over there and then answering based on that top answer that it finds. Okay, and you can ask them this other question. So for example, you can say, can pregnant women donate? And it says over here, can you say that again? Which basically means that, you know, it has not indexed that information till now. Data store is fully not prepared right now. It might take up to four hours or that information might not be present in the data store actually. Um, you actually can ask other questions like I've just come back from a trip to Africa. Can I donate? And it then gives you the answer that you'll need to take the travel quiz to determine if you can donate blood. And then you can ask how can I schedule an appointment? And then it'll give you information about that as well. So these answers are retrieved from the Australian Red Cross Life Blood site. And you can actually go to the link for that over here. And as you can see, you know that the minimum and maximum ages are mentioned over here. And based on this information is what our agent basically answers the question.